Yeah, hi. Alrighty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your early morning, late out of date SmackDown review. I had stuff to do, and also I was really tired to not uh, to not do a SmackDown review. Obviously, the show aired on a tape delay. There were spoilers that were already uh, shown, but I rather that than like a week in advance. I am happy that they uh, did a tape delay show. Then you know, it, you know, even though like. You know, I remember when they did, like, there was, like, when SmackDown did air in a tape delay back in, like, Black Friday this past, last year. You know, Black Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, because, you know, because the, the NF, I think it was, like, it was some game. It was, like, either the hockey or football, baseball, I'm not sure. But it aired in a tape delay. And, you know, even though, like, that was not in the UK. But it was just kind of funny how that happened. But regardless... It was kind of cool, like, that, um, you know, at least, like, I would say that I, I would rather they, if they're going to be UK, um, and obviously, they, it's not like they can air the show exactly live, because that, that's not how, like, TV works, unless it's, like, something like streaming, right? But, it was pretty cool. I mean, it would be nice, like, if they were to do something like that sometime movie, because, but, you know, not everyone would have been home anyways, but regardless... I think it was still all right, you know, watching the show happening in the UK. And again, it was a tape delay aired in the same day. It was not like they taped the show before going on tour or whatever. So, which I do prefer. I do hope to see that when they go to a Saudi show, or whatever. I hope to see that more in the future. And uh, like rather than air, like taping a show a week before, I like that they did that. I like that they actually took the time. And honestly. The show did benefit from it. I felt the show really benefited from being in the UK. Not only that, because there were actually certain shows that Raw aired in the, Raw and SmackDown from the UK. Again, that Raw with Cena and Shawn Michaels, right? Uh, there were certain Raws and SmackDowns that happened in the United Kingdom that were actually good Raws. Uh, and it, or, or enjoyable Raws, stuff that happened. And like when you have shit that it's, it's good. You know, and and they had good crowd reaction. This show, I think, in uh, be, again because this was like the first UK SmackDown or first UK. This is like first time they had a UK aired like TV like they the first time they had a Raw or SmackDown in the UK and aired in tape delay. And actually, the fucking crowd was very loud for this show. So uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying like oh the crowd is what matters. A lot of these people say how dare the crowd don't react on certain shows or whatever. Like, can you really blame them? The show sucks. But I think obviously, because you know, to be fair, the reason why you know they reacted is they are you know they haven't gotten a lot of wrestling and stuff like that. But not just that, I do think like you know they were that like because you were doing stuff that people somewhat cared about on the show. Like you had Reigns on the show, you had like a tag title match, you had stuff that people like. You would like okay. I'm, I'll be a little a bit interested, even though it's not great. Like, is it the same quality as like shows in the attitude or whatever? Then no, it's no way near that. But it's definitely in modern sense that at least like it justified like how they reacted and all that kind of stuff. But part of it is because they haven't had a show in years, a SmackDown there or whatever. Which you know it's kind of cool. It just it sucks that they did not have a good fucking the setup. It's like I understand that. But I, actually, no, I don't understand. It's like, I don't understand why WWE's being cheap. Back in the day, they would put effort in having stages. You know, stages on your show. Like, they didn't even have the regular SmackDown stage on, on the fucking show. And they do these nowadays where these shows, or these pay-per-views, they have these weird way of entering the show, weird entrance way. And also, they don't really have, like, a time tron behind it. It's, like, it's really weird how they do wrestling shows nowadays, in my opinion, or pay-per-views. It, it doesn't look good, in my opinion. I guess, like, to be fair, I think the show was sold out. Maybe that's still cool. I don't fucking know. It's just, like, I miss, like, the old days of having the, a good certain look. But it did look like a full-packed show on uh, on that show. You know, it was, it was nice, I guess, you know. Um... Not bad, you know. I mean, I, I thought the show was pretty boring, unfortunately. But there are some somewhat moments like, you know, yeah, okay, it's cool to see. Actually, me like the main event thing. What am I talking about? It just, yeah, the crowd were all right, you know. Um, even though they were pretty smarky, not denying that. But yeah, that's kind of, It's just the crowd did feel like, a, you know, an old ad to type of pay-per-view show, like Insurrection or whatever. 
It's like it's kind of cool to hear that kind of thing. It's just my point is I do like that they did not do like a tape delay, sh a, a, t a tape show like last week. They aired, they did like a basic tape delay show that they aired like you know did in the UK and then they aired it later on on the day. You know, even though there were spoilers, it's just I'd rather that happen than anything. Even though it annoyed me when I was younger that they did tape delays or whatever. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, one, not just that. It's just I hope they do that more. Like, if you're going to go to a Saudi, uh, Saudi pay-per-view show, heck, give them a SmackDown. Like, air in the tape delay and let's see how, how they do it. I think even a SmackDown there would be nice. You know, you want to do any other international pay-per-views? I think, hey, that's the way to do it. Do a SmackDown there, like a two-for-one type of thing. You know, why not? Maybe it'll be fucking cool. It would be good for them, I think. It would be good, and it'll also be kind of, like, cool to see how the crowd reacts and all that kind of stuff. Like how, and Plus, like again, it's, it's going to air the same day. It's not like you're waiting a week to watch it or whatever. And I do hope, like, you know, if WWE was to do a sort of, like, take, like, again, like, there's going to be holiday shows. Usually, I think the only way you're going to do a, like a tape delay, you're going to do a pre tape show, is like around holidays. I hope they don't do that anymore, in my opinion. I hope they don't do like a tape delay show where, oh, the next week we, we you know. I do hope this is like what they're going to do next time. Because the last time they did like a tape delay show or whatever, the pre tape show, it was the Saudi show, and I hope that doesn't happen anymore. It just like doesn't need to be. Do what they did like tonight with the UK, I think would be nice. And if you have a holiday show coming up, honestly, you don't really need to do a holiday show. Like, and, and like, what's the problem? I don't even think, like, what's the problem of doing a fucking SmackDown the day before Christmas, like, or Christmas Eve? You know, it's like, well, I believe SmackDown, SmackDown, like, uh, the, what was it, the 23rd, the 22nd? It's not like, uh, I believe it was the 22nd. I, I'm, I can't remember, but like, like, is it a problem to have a fucking, your last SmackDown, the 22nd, to have, like, be a live show? Is it a problem to do that? I don't think so. I'm not sh It is what it is. I, I don't know. It just, it's understandable if, you know, okay, 24th, 25th, maybe don't do a live show. It's like, I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. What they did with the fucking, the 20, what, the show after Christmas was kind of fine. Anyways, grab your Coca Cola, ladies and gentlemen. Drink my new sleeves. Find miss bitches. Go, oh shit, oh shit. Let's talk about the fucking show. Enough talking about the crowds or whatever, you know? Oh shit, oh shit. Cheers, motherfuckers. Shout out to the fucking European chicks. They're always invited to my beat black couch. Make them go, oh shit, oh shit. Unless they have fucking smelly pussies. Like, we don't want that shit. Or fucking, you know, hair, fucking armpit hair. We don't want that. But there are some fucking beautiful women from fucking the UK, man. Straight up. Based on experience, okay? So, like, you know, just meeting people. But, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, but, yeah, the show was unfortunately pretty boring for most part because, um, it was, like, again, kind of like a house show type of thing. Even though it was, like, a big crowd, you know, it's, like, on SmackDown. Weird setup with SmackDown, but it is what, it's just, you know, what can you do? That's, like, the normal now with the stupid fucking, the way they do pay-per-views nowadays. So it's like gonna be again. It's gonna be the same setup for SmackDown. So it's pretty much uh, for fucking Money Bank, which is pretty lazy. Well, whatever. I don't know. Is it too much to ask? I don't think so. But it, what can you do? Um, Sami's it's the first match. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens defeats Pretty Deadly to retain the t tag titles. Obviously, I'm happy day one. I I don't know. I don't don't really care about Pretty Deadly. The match was whatever. So it is what it is. Good thing they won. Backstage, there was a, like, Austin Theory and Sheamus segment or whatever with Bridge Holland. And then Adam Pearce did a championship contenders match. Like, really? Like, Bridge Holland versus Austin Theory and the winner, I guess, about Sheamus. I don't know, like, how this worked out. All I know is, like, Sheamus and Austin Theory is going to face each other for the U.S. title next week. So, next week, is going to be, SmackDown's going to be in Madison Square Garden. And I actually have decided that I will be going to Madison Square Garden. This will be my my third wrestling show in a year or two. Again, my last year, my first wrestling show was last year in Madison Square Garden. So happened to be the first Raw where McMahon left because, you know, the whole scandal shit. But, you know, hey, good for him that he's back. Um, and then, you know, the Sean Barkley, the DX. 
again, I, again, I'm from New York and whatever. But um, I'm very excited. I mean, again, obviously, I don't like modern wrestling. But when there are certain things, that are, and there is a reason, like being in a live show does hit different. It it is a better way of watching the show, even though like there are things that are boring. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are certain things that I did not give a fuck when I was like live on those shows but at least there was things to look forward to like my first wrestling show it was like roman reigns was there great very serious 20th anniversary you know the match with ray mysterio the match with ray mysterio dominic versus the judgment day was good you know also fucking you know reigns his six-man tag was good um it was great seeing that you know great seeing people in in, in like fucking legit shit like real life like holy shit and my second wrestling show which was like even better Seeing Brock Lesnar live, fucking Bobby Lashley, Rollins, Rollins winning the title that night, DX, you know, and now in this third show, not only I'm gonna see Roman there, I hopefully see Rey Mysterio, I'm gonna be able to see Edge live. That's what I've been waiting for. Like I've been wait, I'm not missing this moment, especially since Edge's gonna probably retire soon. I'm not missing my moment to seeing Edge. I just wish that again, my first SmackDown. I just wish I saw that. SmackDown when they returned to Madison Square Garden in 2021 to tw Super SmackDown. That SmackDown was actually good. That was a good SmackDown. Brock Lesnar, Roman at the time. Cena was in a dark show match, like really, but at least he would. Be, I would. It would been great to see him. The only reason why I didn't go to that SmackDown because at the time I didn't really know about. I didn't know how to travel much, even though I'm from New York. But again, I was learning, and plus I was busy with school at the time. Still, you know what I mean. I had I, I had like a class at that time, but then the class like ended early. You know, if I went, that would be a great birthday gift to go to for that show. And then, wow, this class ended early. I would have gr I would have time to fucking go see that show, but fuck no. Like it's like I'm getting screwed. Like I can't enjoy that fucking show. You know, seeing seeing him in real life, like holy shit. You know, but man, I'm get at least I get to see Edge. You know what I mean? That's gonna be fucking awesome. I would have loved to been like raw 30th anniversary, but again, that was in Pennsylvania, shit like that. I am hoping in the future I would love to go to WrestleMania. I was hoping WrestleMania 40 would be somewhat in New York, you know. But no, we gotta, we gotta, we, we can't keep tradition anymore. Whatever it is, what it is, okay. <sighs> but yeah, at least that's gonna be cool. We're gonna see like next week is be Sheamus and and Austin Theory for the U.S. title. Hopefully Sheamus wins, or at least something that, like, you know, that, again, like, it, why, why is Austin Theory the fucking US champion? In my opinion, it looks like fucking S Cena should have beat Austin Theory anyways. Because, like, wow, Austin Theory, just, that win did not do anything for him. And I even, I even said it. Like, why would he fucking lose the fucking, uh, it's just, what a waste. What a fucking waste of Austin Theory. Him fucking winning. Theory attacked Holland after the match, and Sheamus quickly came out to save and Theory retreats. Apparently, apparently Austin Theory won with a drop kick. By the way, people, and I think I saw it. I was like, "What the fuck?" It looks so stupid. Karen Cross sends a message that he says it felt phenomenal, winning with three moves and being in three minutes. I want to face you one on one for some dumb like why. Again, okay, what are they doing, Karen Cross? It's like, Karen Cross is such a missed potential. It's like, what a joke they have made him. Like, they haven't done anything with this guy. And the thing about Karen Cross, I gotta say this, I discovered that this guy has a great fucking Jesse Ventura impression. Don't tell me don't go forward, Webster. I, I don't know if I can do it. Come on, Chris. I don't. I, I was the. I was doing tricep extensions to go for talk. I'm a frog, man, just like you, bitch. I don't know if that was a good. It's a conspiracy girl. Uh, it's a conspiracy girl in my soon. Don't tell me you got four more lets. I don't know. Dermite paint from the Nigerian nail or whatever the fuck. I don't fucking know. I, I, can't, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like in a moment, you know? Bailey defeated. Uh, okay. This is where I hate Smarks. The Smarky fans that were singing for Bailey. And as I think of myself, like, why? Like, again, I don't get why Smarks think Bailey is like the most attractive woman. Her ass. That's like, oh, if you only care about her ass when she literally looks like fucking Jay Leno, 
It's like you guys are looking, not looking at a total package. It's like you guys only care about fucking. Ass. It's like even if the bitch is a man, it's like her ass or his ass. Like y'all don't care for the whole package. Like literally, Bailey. Like it's not even a good ass. Like what the fuck? It's like not even that impressive. And second, like seriously, her. Like come on, you really want to fuck Bailey's shin? Oh, Bailey, hug me. You should want to fuck Bailey, but like who the fuck would? But the fact that Smarks, like, they think she's the most beautiful woman, like, and they're saying, Bailey, 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 oh, I, I want to know, oh, would you be my girl? Like, what kind of fucking, that is the most neck beardy, most simplest ass fucking chant I have ever heard. That is like the worst chant I have ever heard. Imagine if you're chanting that to other women. And then, like, do you not know how fucking weird that shit is? Like, God, my God, what a fucking simpy ass fucking people. And that's the UK. Y'all fucking weird. I'm sorry. And then, again, you want the reason why they wanted to fuck this woman, again, she was a John Cena character. So basically, a lot of these fucking fans are kind of pedos. Like, holy shit. It's okay if she acts like Cena or she, you know, she's better than Cena. It's okay. Maybe I'm okay liking it. You know, but Cena still sucks. Like, you guys are fucking fags. I like, straight up. Bailey defeats shots and shits, or shits, I would I should say. With a hit, uh, with a sits of EO Sky backstage. Oh, she's angry and then she gets her fucking haircut cut. Um, I don't know. I don't even give a fuck. I don't know. Oh, she got got her hair cut. I mean, they even cut her, uh, all her hair. It's like, great. So we're gonna have like, I mean, not that I give a fuck about shits. I don't think she's attractive at all. But great, she's even be more unattractive with like no hair, with no hair, or like stupid short hair. I don't even, I don't care. I don't fucking care. We have Grayson, the Grayson Waller effect with with guest uh, Logan Paul. Um, he says he's known in the UK for making KSI famous. Um, Paul comes out to booze. Uh, Waller asks what it means to have the guaranteed title shot. Paul says it me will mean a lot, but he doesn't know why he's getting booed. Paul says his dream won't end until WWE gold is around his waist. Paul says he might get his paychecks uh, pay payback on Seth Rollins, or he maybe will get, take care of unfinished business with the Tribal Chief. Or maybe he will smack ML LA Knights with a briefcase. LA Knight interrupts and to a big pop, which, uh, again, a big pop. You know, that's, so, you know, that's why I should win it. Like, listen, the Godfather got big pops. Doesn't mean fucking Godfather should be world champion. A lot of wrestlers in the anterior got big pops. Doesn't mean the guy should be fucking world champion. Seriously, come on. It's too early for LA Knight. I don't. I do think the guy has potential, but it's too early for him to be like this world champion. People, but who wins Money in Bank? That's why, like, literally nobody's really credible to win Money in Bank. Like, like you're not Logan Paul is. I don't know why it's a problem because he's a mega star. Because oh, he's like a part time. He's not a real wrestler. Well, guess what? He's better than all these fucking current timers, anyways. So shut the fuck up. LA Knight interrupts with to a big pop. Knight says Paul has proven a lot with what he's been given, but Knight hasn't been given a thing, and still the fans calling him for him. Yeah, which you know he's good. He says every time he walks in the ring, the whole world jumps to on their feet because he made it that way. Ellie respects folk for what he's done in social media, but now he's standing in the WWE ring and realize money bank odds are uh, are on Knight for a reason. Paul asks Megastar to who. And mocks Knight for being uh, 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 being called up as a manager after 20 lackluster years in the business. So, it's great that he's mentioning backstage stuff. You know, it makes him, like, again, not just some celebrity, you know, like, guy. Like, he, like he's mentioning shit that makes sense as, like, a wrestler. So, like, it makes you think, wow, this guy actually knows the business or whatever, you know, and all that kind of stuff, so... I can't say that if Logan Paul was a big fan or he understands like all the backstage shit. He understands, you know, like like all these smarks and whatever. Or like, you know, he understands like, you know, if you're a wrestling fan. But apparently like, Logan Paul was like he grew up as a wrestling fan. Like he had like, 
it was like a picture of him with an old WWE title. So who knows? Maybe the guy always, has always been a fan. It's not like he was like always like a smart like or fucking a guy that you know talk read dirt sheets and blah blah blah. But like he was obviously a fan and he's like in the know what things are. So like good for him. In a way, like that kind of like makes respect me respect him even more. Like the guy knows this shit and yeah, he, he was a fan and it's like an aspiration to why not do this and he's actually fucking good. This is like his true calling in all honesty. Like why not? Knight says that Paul ha had it ain't hurt. He ain't, he's not listening and asked the crowd to tell him whose game it is and they oblige saying LA Knight and Paul tells the fans to go home because they're drunk. Which I mean it's kinda of funny. <laughs> it's, it's it's good. I I I I like what uh, their interaction it kind of makes me again want to see, and it, it does this because of this reception. I kind of do wish like La Knight was a babyface. In any if anything, I think La Knight is perfect to beat Austin Theory for the U.S. title. Maybe that could be the way if he was to win the, the Money in the Bank. Because again, they like to make this bullshit. But that's literally the reason why Money in the Bank is a thing. Because they're gonna cash not they can cash out mid card titles, which is a problem. You know what I mean? That's the fucking problem with money in the bank now. But um he's a heel right now. But again, they're smarts that say you should be world champion. Again, it's too early. That's probably the only way I would do it, you know. Him winning money in bank and cashing on the US championship. That and becoming a baby face. That's really it in my opinion. You know what I mean? Santos Escobar interrupts. Escobar says Knight think he already won and Paul wants to win, but Escobar needs to win this because of for Velasco or something, some luchador shit. But then Butch comes out, he immediately goes after Paul, and the brawl ensues. It's just you know typical money bank type of shit, whatever. Butch defeats Santos and Ellie Knight for some reason. And then everyone brawls. Oh, they're climbing the money in the bank. And then Butch eventually climbs the ladder and unhooks the money in the bank. Which, okay, so El so Logan Paul did kind of meaning that he might not win. But he was like one of the main contenders that he will win. The thing is, Butch did it. And you know damn well he's not winning. Especially with this. And again, like, what? Again, this is so stupid. The match is not happening. Why are they climbing? Like, how is that psychologically a good reason to climb? And I don't know, it's not even, the match hasn't happened. What are you trying to prove? You know what I mean? The match is not happening. It's all fucking stupid. It's really stupid. Like, why are you climbing and unhooking when it's not the match? Doesn't matter. You're not going to win <laughs> anyway, so whatever. So now we know, like, Butch is definitely not going to win, unfortunately. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. I, I don't hate the guy. It's just how it is. Oscar versus Charlotte Flair ends in a no contest after Bianca Belair and the Fury. She got attacked She got attacked by, uh, accidentally, but then she attacks both of them, which is, like, justified or whatever. They go through the Money Bank match card. Okay, let's. Th this is one of the reasons why I wanted to also, like, I wanted to talk about this. So apparently, Money in the Bank, the main event won't be the Bloodline. That's the most build-up match, and that's not gonna make the event the fucking show. Wait, first of all, that match should be like no qualifications. Okay, it's a gonna be a war. It has to be, and I do advocate. Why not? I think the Usos should win in that match, and uh, I I would not mind that. It would lead to like one of them or both of them facing Roman at SummerSlam. Michael Cole. I, Michael Cole, for you people that are these fake resolutionary YouTubers acting like Michael Cole is such a great commentator. You're, he's not. <laughs> okay, he's fucking not. Michael Cole. Him and Michael Cole's uh, fucking Wade Barrett. Uh, Barrett has like Barrett. Um, literally said, "Oh my god!" And that's our main event. Dom oh my god! Imagine the booze. Dominic Mysterio versus Cody Rhodes is gonna be event. Rest money in the bank. Money in the bank. They're main eventing. 
What? Like, are you fucking kidding me? That match is main eventing. In what world, how does that make any fun? First of all, in what world, how is that a pay-per-view match? And in what world, how does that make any fucking sense to be the main event when you have the bloodline? The bloodline Civil War, which is like the match that you're basically build, building up. It's been one of the main feuds. And it's been the match that basically people are looking forward to the most. Main event caliber of anything. And that's not the main event. Instead, we're getting not Dominic Mysterio. Because of what? Is it because of the booze? Again, that's what, that, that's probably why smarts are booing. Because, like, it's like, again, you smarts, like, you know, are dumb or you fans are dumb. You're literally booing Dominic because, you know, you're told to. That's the thing. They're told to. That's kind of why Dominic's been getting this heel heat, right? So you guys claim, you know, you're smart or whatever, yet you basically do what WWE does say. Or what wrestlers do say, what AEW says, what WWE says. But you're not fucking crossing the line or, you know, being revolutionary. No, you're fucking listening to WWE because they're telling you, boo this guy. But what? Just because the guy gets booed, does not mean it's for me to make the show! This match has no real story! Why is this made of a... First of all, why is this a match on a pay-per-view? This is not even a pay-per-view. This is not even a pay-per-view match. This is not even a raw main event at best. Okay, but that's like probably like the only decent, the only way you could probably book this show or a show for like a match like this is like the main event raw, not a fucking pay-per-view when there's no titles on the fucking line and there's like no real story with this. This is the main event. Oh, but. But the but Brock Lesnar might return and uh you know oh it's gonna probably return like um, this, here's the thing, this shit only works if it's like the return of a returning wrestler that we haven't seen in a fucking while. But we all know this is gonna be fucking Lesnar. How does this make any fucking sense? Like, but regardless, why should this be even the main event? Can you not have do during the show the person who's returning return during the show? Why does this have to be an event? And most likely, like literally, 75, 85, heck, 90% chance. 95, heck, 99%! 99%! We know it's fucking Lesnar. We know it's fucking Lesnar. Why even have this the main event anyways? Well, that can, can that be the big thing going on during the show? We can't have that during the show? Why does that have the main event the fucking show? It's not like it's fucking a big returning legend. Unless it's fucking Stone Cold The Rock. Fucking trip. Unless it's get a legit wrestler who has not been on TV. I would understand if your main event in the show and The Undertaker returns in the main event. I would understand that shit. But no, Undertaker's retired. A lot of these wrestlers who are good enough to be, 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 return in the main event are retired or just non WWE. We know Brock Lesnar is back. We know Brock, Le Bro Brock Lesnar is. Okay, he's been around. He's been back. We know that it's going to be Brock Lesnar coming out and costing Cody in the match. It's predictable as all hell. Can it not be in the middle of the show? Why does it have to be in the end? What is Brock Lesnar going to fucking do? And maybe if they were to do on the show, that would at least kind of make the show intriguing still. Then just because again, at least with the main event, with the main event of the bloodline, you have to hope to make people care about the match, the ending. We're going to tune in to stay throughout the fucking show. Not fucking skip through it or stop watching at a certain time. Because not everybody knows Lesnar's coming back. You know, some people are dumb and whatever. But, like, come on here. You're really going to fucking end the show with Cody Rhodes versus Dominic Mysterio and Michael Cole's eyes. Imagine the booze of this. Like, shut the fuck up, Michael Cole. You're still a fucking tool. God damn. Fucking God. And even these people, you know, but that's probably you should say that the triple Vince McMahon is back. What about Triple No, he was still a fucking tool sounding faggot. Michael Cole, you're a fucking tool. Fuck you. Seriously. Are you high? Testing. One, two, three. You're high. You're only good for just coming up with my thing. You're high. Yeah, you're coming on my ass all day, John. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
I uh, have some bear sounds. Uh, bear sounds, huh? Oh yeah, bear, bear, barrage me, barrage me, bear. Oh yeah, hi, oh, oh, oh look, oh look, he's barraging me, John. Oh yeah, hi, oh. Oh my God, really, Dominic Mysterio versus Cody Rhodes is the main event. I hope that's a lie. I hope they change their mind. Please change your mind, please. Holy shit. You're really gonna main event the show with Dominic and fucking. <laughs> I would only understand. Again, a match to main event with Dominic is like with Rey Mysterio. I would understand if that match was the main event to fucking show. Not Cody Rhodes versus Dominic Mysterio, where there's really no even any story in that fucking match. Get get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here with that shit, man. Are you kidding me? That match is main eventing the fucking show? What kind of world is that? That's not even a main event for Raw, but unfortunately that's like more better, more option that's better than a pay-per-view. Like, come on. Again, that's like literally a mid-card Raw match, unfortunately. Like, come on. It's like, always will be. Like, come on. How? Whatever. What's announced for next week, the Radar Superstar Edge will be the special guest on the Brace of Wall effect that may lead to a feud with Edge versus somebody, perhaps. I don't know, maybe Edge might announce his retirement uh, because he is retired. He's saying he's going to retire soon. He's trying to re retire in Toronto, which is going to be pretty sad. I'm just hoping to at least see Edge like once in my life, you know what I mean? I just wish, I obviously wish to see him wrestle live. That's why I wish I saw that lot, that show on Madison Square Garden in 2021, which was, again, a good show. I keep saying that. That's, like, one of my big regrets. Like, again, I knew I had to kind of travel at the time, even though I was, like, still not really know, but I could have, like, find my way out anyways, right? I got to find a way anyways to fucking, fi like, go to the show. Like, now I know where Madison Square Garden is. Now I know how to kind of commute in New York and shit like that. But it's, like, also that, like, I was busy with college, but, like, it's just, like, what the fuck, man? I should have gone to that fucking show. That would have been fucking epic. So Edge will be on the Grace of Wall effect. Sheamus versus Austin Theory and Styles versus Karrion Cross was like whatever. Oh yeah, early on the show, AJ Styles accepted the challenge. You only you only won because you had your your woman to protect you, whatever, in three minutes. But now I have my I have my case scenario to self support me or whatever. It's fucking me and him. I don't give a fuck. I don't. And you know, oh, yeah, me cheating. Oh, whatever. I don't give a shit. The main event, uh, Rome, Rome Reigns had, like, a weird entrance with the pyro. Obviously, like, you know, because the way they pro... Like, but that's the thing. Why you're fucking setting up your show a certain way where you can't do proper pyro? I don't fucking know. Um, Rome Reigns solo and, and Poyman uh, in the main event. The main event segment. He calls on L London to acknowledge him, and they acknowledge him with booze, which is like, wow, a... a Kind of actually boos him, like you know. Usually people would cheer. Ray says he has a he has let the Uso say we the ones for a few years, but now he's the only one because he has like a the only one shirt now. He has a shirt that says he's the only one, which uh, it, it works. He knows people think that he's an arrogant narcissist, but he's the greatest of all time. He's one of the reasons that uh, that he's one he's the only one that loves and cares about his cousins. No one gave them opportunities but him, but brought him to promised land. Fans chant Roman sucks, and then he, and they basically you know he capitalized on the fandom, the fans fucking bashing him. He turned out like he says, he says what sucks is one of your family betrays you. Rain says he's the only one in the family who wants to give them a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, like a good father. And as a tribal chief, he'll give Usos as many chances as they need, but they need to come out here, bow down, acknowledge him, apologize, and then move on. The Usos in the rope to a big pop. Jimmy says they are the past. Uh, they are past acknowledging, apologizing. They are done with the bloodline. It's all about the consequences now. Jay says Reigns has never thought about the consequences if he lo loses. What happens if he loses? Uh, Jay says, "What? When's the last time Roman has been pinned?" Jimmy says, three years ago." The next time, uh, Jay says, "Jimmy says tomorrow night," which is like, I actually wouldn't mind if Reigns was. People say it will hurt. Him losing whenever someone pinned him for the world title, but again, it's still kind of big that you still have that opportunity. Again, that him getting him losing the championship, the per people who beat him is still big. 
Sure, it may not be very big, but I still think both ideas are big enough that you could actually have Reigns getting pinned tomorrow or today now. And it will still matter because, again, he'll be losing the title. And honestly, kind of like, I wouldn't mind seeing the Usos beat them, you know? Or like, being the ones to pin Roman. I would not mind that. And also, Reigns loses, he'll be the only one out. Neither of them want to be the tribal chief, but they they, they got somebody fit to be uh, might fit just the job perfectly. And even though he's tripping, he got the Usos vote. They all stare at Solo. Solo is like uh, like um. So yeah, they're all staring at Solo. So this is like again building up that like maybe the little dissension. Reigns goes to see on him as he's laughing, and then like Solo is like, "Why are you laughing?" and whatever. He kind of got a little serious. Again, I do think, like, and I hope this doesn't happen. I do think it's too early to have Solo leave Roman. I don't think that's what should happen. Not yet. It should be Solo being the true loyal leader of the bloodline. Until when it's time to have Solo and Roman feud. And I think that should be at WrestleMania. I do think, and I think, I, I believe I said this in my past reviews. Or my past, like, the, the what, and since when the bloodline officially broke up, right? I do think how they can book this is that Solo could be the one the droning reigns at WrestleMania. Basically, you pull like a sort of evolution breakup. Basically, you pull a Batista and Roman Reigns. I mean, Batista and Triple H scenario in a modern way. The Samoan way or whatever. Where Solo, he wins the Royal Rumble. I would say that. Like, have Solo be the one winning the Royal Rumble th this coming year. Um. Oh, is he? Spe it's speculated he's gonna challenge Seth Rollins, right? You know, he's gonna probably challenge Seth Rollins. Ch is Rollins still the champion? Which I think that could also help. Maybe if Rollins is still the champion after all this time, you could build that, you know, shielded uh, issue. Maybe Rollins could be a little involved with that. But then, you know, but it's gonna be solo eventually. You know, even though they're gonna pull the whole, it, it will be kind of a similar way. But then, like, Reigns just like, he wants that to happen because, you know, he doesn't want to lose his title to his own cousin, right? And then, so, like, kind of use that way to strike him down. Maybe even tricks. Maybe he is going to Raw. But then, eventually, he finds that he actually is staying to SmackDown, like, you know, when, like, maybe, like, the last minute. I don't fucking know. Just, my thing is, I would, regardless, I would just, you know, pull up Batista Triple H and have it be the modern sense where it's gonna be fucking Solo versus Rock at WrestleMania. If you can't do The Rock at WrestleMania, that's why I would think what you should do. Or you could even do still The Rock and Roman, you know, if they were gonna do some, well, I don't know, but I would do that. Solo be the one uh, dethroning fucking Roman. I, I, I don't, at this moment, that that's what I would do. That's what I would do, honestly, in, the, in this case. That would be the fucking... Main event for WrestleMania for one of the nights. Definitely night two, because that's where I would have Roman lose the titles. It, again, who should beat Roman for the titles? It has to be either his fa own family members. Could it be Jay? It could be. Uh, or Solo. Or it could be The Rock. You know, it has to be now those three. I don't want to see Cody, honestly. I don't. I really don't. I was never really a big fan of Cody anyway, so I'm kind of like happy that. That's, but it's like they're still kind of want to do it. There's no real guy unless maybe Edge or somebody like somebody uh, like only or a legend. Nobody's really fucking credible. Stone Cold is like probably only other legend, but, but he's like you know if he came out of retirement again. But everybody's kind of like you know beat him or they, he lost and it's like they're not really that credible to beat Lesnar. I mean Reigns anymore. So it's like whatever you know. That's why I would do. <laughs> Then uh, Jay climbs the uh, climbs up to the apron. Rain says says Jay is nothing without him. Reigns is much in his face by, by uh, face by Jay, and then right into okay. So then like you know they, a little brawl ensues. They all punch. They all attack each other. Soul is still like a line to Reigns. They're all attacking each other. Blah blah blah. Reigns does eventually do a Superman punch. It's like uh, and, but then he gets tossed out of the fucking ring. They're all outside the ring, and then I think it was J uh, Jimmy. I think Jimmy. Uh, was it Jimmy? Oh, no, it was Jay. Jay hits a suicide dive all four of them, and the show ends with them, like, just basically, like, they're hurt. 
and this leads. They yeah, also the security cards got involved. They all got attacked by like range, which is like you know. So I you know it's all right. You know, a little brawl for it's kind of a little typical brawl before the show, before you know your pay per view show. But I don't mind it. You know, it's whatever. I I'm a bit intrigued. Again, I'm still intrigued. This is going to be the only good real match on the show, in my opinion. You know, that's the main event. That, that should be the rightful main event. Like, I don't understand how this match is not gonna, should not be the main event. I don't understand. That's the most stupidest thing you could do. That this match is not main eventing the fucking show. But Dominic... And, listen, no disrespect to Dominic Mysterio. The guy got promise. I like Dominic. I respect the guy. I, I like Dominic Mysterio. It's just, you're too early. It's just like, what the fuck? Bro, that main event should not ha be happening in it. Like, the only way Dominic Mysterio is, like, justified to main event a show is, like, if he's facing his father, honestly. But, like, this is, like, what, what how, or, he, how does this make any fucking sense? Uh, especially compared to the Bloodline storyline. What the fuck? Oh, because Lesnar's coming back? Again, Lesnar's been back for how much, how many times? And I love Lesnar. But, again, there's still no, no, makes no sense with the story. And then they're gonna fucking do that shit? Like, come on. Unless it's the return of Randy Orton, which is like that's like the big rumor of Orton, he's coming back. But do you really think that Orton's gonna be returning and cost Cody the match? Like what? Like whatever. I don't fucking know. Like that's the only justified idea I see, really. But like if anything, I will say this. The only justified idea that I think Orton should come back, he should be a little bit of a babyface still, because I do think that like, there is that like kind of revenge story that Orton again Orton got beat up by the bloodline, right? Orton's quest should be the WWE title. I would say at payback, given that you know the name payback, like since I again I would bring back Unforgiven instead, but I would do instead at payback will be Orton versus fucking Reigns for the title. That's what I would have done. And plus, I, that was like the original match for SummerSlam, which I'm glad in a way that that match didn't happen. It does. It, it kind of is okay for, if you were to do that at Payback instead, in my opinion. So there you go. That should be the match for the title. Payback. Orton versus fucking Reigns. There you go. And then eventually, if you want to have Orton become a heel, then yeah, sure, whatever. But like, in the end, because like, people want to see him as a heel, it just kind of makes sense. Like, why not have him become a ba still be a baby face right now? Because after all, the last time you see Orton, it was like involving the bloodline. So it makes sense for Orton versus Reigns to have a little feud first. In my opinion. You know? But yeah, that's the show for you. Um, again, I still can't believe that's the main event idea. Dominic versus fucking Cody Rhodes. Like, really? Cody Rhodes. They're basically booking him like fucking babyface Roman Reigns. Like, they're shoving him down our throats, aren't they? Like, they don't know how to book baby faces. That's the fucking problem. Alright, that's not the same. Just keep it real. That's the show for you. Overall, the main event was okay. Se main event segment was okay. It was good. Overall, the show was pretty boring. But, you know, crowd, you know. If, aside from the Bailey nerdy, smarty, simpy shit. You know, they're all right crowd, you know. Money in bank. We'll see what happens with that. Oh, that's not the same. Just keep it real. Get your gains. Call my news. These five minutes of bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. That's what I'm saying. Until next time. Peace. Yeah, bye.